Welcome to the Olympic Weightlifting and Sports Performance Series, the Throws Edition. In this video, you're gonna get three specific movements that are gonna teach you how to apply force over a long period of time, learn how to absorb force, learn how to increase your mobility, dramatically increase strength, dramatically lead to improvements in rate of force production. And my most important cue behind Olympic weightlifting and sports performance for the throws is to learn how to execute technical movements at high speeds and high velocity. So the no feet snatch is one of the best movements for Olympic weightlifting and for throwing specifically. And so we got NCAA All-American legend boys in Hayes, and he's going to be demonstrating the no feet snatch. And so what we want to get out of the no feet snatch from a coaching perspective is we want the athlete to increase their mobility, to learn how to use their technical skills at high speeds and to learn how to apply force through a long grounded position. And so what we're going to do is legend's going to get a snatch grip, he's gonna start with his feet in the catch position. So it's important to think about being in the catch position. So if you pull here, you catch here, that's your pulling stance for the no feet snatch. And what that does is that is actually very, very similar to the power position that we might be in if we're a shot putter or if we're a discus thrower. And so Legend's gonna focus on getting those knees back and we'll go, maybe we'll do a little slow one where we go knees back, knees come back through makes contact, he's gonna catch, and he's allowed to plantar flex, but he's actually not allowed to move his feet out. So he can plantar flex, dorsiflex, get back in that catch position. Okay, give me one where you go all the way in the hole now. And think a little tighter around your knees. Good, now one more, and I want you to think. Knees go back, and then knees come through, so you're making a little bit better contact off the hips. Good, perfect. So a lot of shot putters, a lot of discus throwers tend to be internally rotated. They're doing a lot of bench pressing. And what, what the no feet snatch does is it makes you coordinate that upper body with the connection to the ground so that we're not jumping all over the place. They're gonna increase their hip mobility, their lower back mobility, but most importantly, their thoracic mobility. And not only is that gonna make them a little bit more mobile throughout their pecs so that if they're a discus thrower, they can catch the discus back a little bit deeper because their thoracic spine's a little bit more mobile, but it's also gonna open their chest up a little bit more so they're gonna lengthen their pecs and they're gonna be able to, I even believe that this is gonna lead to them having a bigger bench press. So the no feet snatch is great for increasing strength, increasing acceleration, leading to tremendous gains in mobility and most importantly, learning how to apply technical skills at high speed. favorite strength movements in my entire toolbox if I'm gonna be using that for shot putters or discus throwers. And so why do I love the no feet clean? Oftentimes our shot putters or discus throwers come from a background where they play football and they're coming from that American football style power clean where they're here, they're catching with their hips forward, the, the bar's almost folding them into an accordion. And what's great about the no feet clean is that that can completely, this exercise can completely wipe out that American football starfish power clean. So what I wanna see with Legend is I wanna see him start with his foot position in the pulling stance. So if, if you front squat, wherever you front squat here, I want you to pull in that front squat position. And that's gonna be very similar to the width of your power position if you're a shot putter or a discus thrower. And as he pulls, he's gonna catch without actually moving his feet out. He's allowed to plantar flex his feet, 
but then he has to dorsiflex immediately without actually sliding his feet. So legend, let's see this. Okay, you may want a little deeper and keep that a little, still stay a little bit tighter around those knees so knees will clear back, then the knees will come back through for tight hip connection. Good, perfect. One more. Right there, that was, what, that, was, that was way better. And so if we can think about the big benefits behind the no feet clean is that you're gonna gain massive amounts of strength. Everybody can clean more than they can snatch. So we've had, you know, Sam Mattis has no feet clean over 180 kilos and that's one of the biggest factors behind the no feet clean is that you learn how to apply force over a long period of time, a long pulling period. You learn how to feel grounded. You learn how to use your toes and your heel as almost as, as fingers. You learn how to absorb force in the catch and to stay tight in the, in the catch so that you have good trunk stability. And on top of that, you're gonna learn how to use technical skills at high velocity. Behind the neck jerk is my favorite lift for throwers. It's one of my favorite lifts for everybody in general because it's so easy to do. It's easy on the body. If you know how to fail properly, it's really simple to fail. It's easy to, to feel a good dip. It's easy because the bar position's in a really good spot. It's automatically over your hips. And when you get into that split position, you learn how to control the speed of the bar. You learn how to be more stable and more mobile in your thoracic spine. And you learn how to decelerate really, really heavy weight from a technical perspective. So if, if we went on force plates, behind the neck jerk is the lift that will measure the highest amount of force production out of all the lifts that you could ever imagine on the force plates. So you got NCAA All-American, NCAA runner up in the discus, legend Boyce and Hayes, and he's gonna demonstrate for us. He's gonna have his grip slightly wider than his clean grip, maybe move it in a hair. And he's gonna go six to eight inch on his dip. And what I like to see with throwers is I want to see their, their non-dominant leg forward. So a lot of people might try and jerk with their right foot forward, but if they're a right-handed thrower, I want to see it transfer where that left foot is actually forward. And that left foot should be forward. And when they pause in that split position, they're going to have a lot of force driving up. They're going to drop that back knee and get into that good tight split position. And I want them to feel that acceleration and then deceleration when they get into the split. So they're gonna accelerate fast, get into the split quickly and decelerate and learn how to have, have that position that's gonna be very, very similar to the power position or the finish of a discus throw or the finish of a, of a javelin throw, the finish of a shot throw. So Legend's gonna demonstrate here, two to three reps. Gonna drive that up a little bit more, a little more stable with that back leg. That's better there. Good. Let me get one more. Good. And so, give me, actually, give me one more and we, I'm gonna hold that. So if you see here, right there, he's a little bit off balance. Now he just gained his balance back. But if you look at his, his back leg is gonna be very similar to the same position he wants to be in when he's finishing. His front leg is gonna be almost close to extension, but still have a little bit of knee flexion, similar position he wants to be in when he's finishing the discus throw. Okay, Legend, you can put that down. So going back over everything, the, the behind the neck jerk, it's very, very easy to, to accomplish. It's, it's right over your hips. It should stay over your hips when you get into that, into that split position or power position. If you're thinking about it from a thrower's perspective, you're gonna learn how to decelerate a large amount of weight in a very quick amount of time. So you're gonna execute technical skills with a lot of weight at a very high velocity. And that's why behind the neck jerk carry over, carries over so well to the throwing world.
So that concludes our throws edition of Olympic weightlifting and sports performance. Make sure that you check out our other series of Olympic weightlifting and sports performance and how we apply the Olympic lifts to a whole bunch of different sports. Follow our new movement library on YouTube where we're gonna go in depth a little bit more with each exercise that we like to use here at Garage Strength. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Garage Strength. Follow us on Instagram at Garage Strength and check out Garage Strength Farm on Facebook. Peace.